You know, when you first begin a design, the challenge is to come up with an inspiration for what the design should be about. And in this particular project, my inspiration was this little set here, this teapot and this warmer. Uh, I got the set for about $20 on the internet. It was clear glass, of course, but it did have this uh, pink handle here. And on the top of the lid was this beautiful little pink rosebud. And so that became my inspiration for the design for not only the teapot and the warmer, but the whole set of uh, glass dishes that I was going to sandblast. So to find the reference image, I go to Google search and I type in rose. And I go to the images section and I use the advanced search tools to say that I want clip art, which is simple art and black and white because that's going to be the easiest thing for me to use to create a vector drawing. When I find one I like, I click on it and I go to visit page, which will help me find the terms of use for the particular image I've selected. So here's the rose that I'm interested in and I'm going to click on that and by reading here, I can see that I'm allowed to use this free clip art for personal use. If I wanted to put it on something that I was going to resell, I would have to get a different sort of licensing agreement, and I'll talk more about that in a second. So I'm trying to create a vector illustration of the rows, and I'm going to start by creating a blank document. I pick mobile or web, something that's going to give me RGB color, and I set the units to inches, and I know that the size of the plate I'm going to put this on is about a 3 by 3 inch space, so that's the size I make my drawing. I take my free clip art and I place it in the drawing. I'm going to use this as a reference, and I'm going to use the image trace capability. I stretch it to fit the 3 by 3 inch space and then I pick object, image trace, make and expand. I know from using this function that it's going to put an outline around both the white parts and the black parts and this tends to result in duplicate lines and that's not what I'm looking for. So I'm going to need to select all the white spaces and delete them. To do this, I use the magic wand tool, and I click in a white space, and I know I have the white selected because you can see in this panel here that it's filled with white and the outline, while it's there, is invisible. It's got that slash. So I push the delete button and I delete that. I right click on the image and I say release compound path you'll find that you have to ungroup and release compound path several times to get down to the lines that you really want to deal with. So now I've selected them and I've turned them red and I, I almost have what I want but I have this outline around it that isn't uh, necessary for what I want to do. So I'm going to select just that outline and I'm going to delete that. And what I'm left with uh, is a vector drawing that just outlines the components that I want to cut on the vinyl cutter. So I have a single full bloom rose, but I want to get some rose leaves and I want to get some rose buds using the same process with other free bits of clip art. And then I want to put them all on one page like this so that I can send it all to the vinyl cutter and essentially get a bunch of little sticker sheets with leaves on it and buds on it and the large rose. In my prior video on screen printing I showed how you surround the vinyl image with a frame to make it easy to work with. So I'm going to put a little frame around this so that I can peel it away and cut on those lines and have separate sticker sheets I can work with to apply images to my sandblasting items. So now I have a single rose with a frame around it and I'm going to create my larger drawing where I want to put 
all the stickers that I want to print on the vinyl cutter. I'm making this 24 inches wide because I know that's how wide my vinyl is. And it's really an endless roll of vinyl, but I'll just say 24 inches for the, the height as well. I go back to my rows. I select all by doing pressing Control A and I group it so that it'll stay together and make it easy to work with when I get it over onto the large drawing. I press Control C to copy. I go to the new document, press Control V to paste, and there's one version. I Control V again, paste another version. I put them next to each other. Now I select the two of them. I press Control C to copy the two. Now when I do Control V, I get two at a time. And in this way, I build up a sheet of stickers that I want to print out together. So what if what you want is not free, or you want vector drawings that so you can skip the image trace step? Well, you can go to a site like this where you can find the image you want. You can see the price for buying different sizes of images or even the vector drawings. The V here is a vector drawing. You don't have to do image trace. It's already done for you. And in this case, for about $35, you can buy one with an extended license that lets you put it on things you plan on reselling. So that's really a pretty good deal. So in our next video, I'll show you how I use these images to do sandblasting.